What's up YouTube? Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a super simple text editor. This isn't going to be anything fancy, so you know, don't be expecting Microsoft Word here. But what I'm going to do is fire up Visual Studio 2019 and create a new project. It's going to be a WPF app on the .NET framework and I'm going to be using .NET Framework 4.7.2 and the project name I'm going to say Super Simple Text Editor and I will create this project and here we go so the first thing that I'm going to do is edit the window settings or properties. I'm going to make the title super simple text editor. The height, we'll set this to 700 and the width to 1150. Next we're going to want to add a couple of buttons. So I'm going to put a button right here and you can just size these however you feel fit and the content of this one's going to be open a text file the name of this button we'll set it to open file btn and we will want a click event handler so we'll just set the click event handler as a new event handler and let that auto generate so now we can just copy this button and we'll use it again essentially so this time we're going to do the save so save file button uh, we're going to want to generate a new click event handler so let's just delete that for now and save a text file and we'll drag that down and create our new click event handler for this button. All right, cool. So next we're going to want to add a text box and this will be uh this will be where we do like we where we can read and edit our text file. So we'll draw that pretty big and we're going to want to specify some properties here so first we're going to specify the name as file space box the border brush i'm going to set it to black this just outlines the box so you can see it a little bit better and the border thickness to one and we're also going to want to do a vertical scroll bar I'm going to set the visibility to auto and we'll make the font size a little bit bigger so it's a little easier to read and then we're also going to set a key down event I will explain this in more detail later on so next up we're going to want to do a text block and this one will be our file name block. So this just kind of lets you know which file you have selected, which file you're working with right now. Oh, and don't forget in our text box, let's go ahead and erase this text right here. So let's set that to no text for right now. And then with our text block, so this is where our file name will reside. So we're going to want to name this block as file name block and our background we'll set it to light gray. Let's make the font size a little bit bigger. And we're also going to do a horizontal scroll viewer. You probably won't ever have to see this, but we'll go ahead and specify that. All right, cool. And then let's get rid of the text there as well so no text here okay and then our final step here in the UI is to just add one more text block and this is just to let let you know 
what you're looking at here and this will be uh, this will just literally say uh, file name go like so and so yeah that completes the UI and now we will move on to the coding section all right so now we're ready to get started on the coding section of this application so the first thing we're going to want to do is add a reference to system.windows.forms uh, system.windows.forms right here make sure there's a check right there and press OK and now we're going to use that namespace, so using system.windows.forms. And you'll most likely get an error right here. You should get an error right here, because now this is looking at system.windows.forms.keyEvent arguments, and that's not what we want for WPF. So we're going to specify this namespace as system.windows.input.keyEventArguments E. Next, we want to add a couple of strings, and these will be used throughout our application here. So, file dialog name equals just a blank string, and then a couple of string arrays for reading and writing our text. And I'll declare these with a size of 1000. So for reading, and then we'll make another one for editing. Okay. Now we're ready to start working with our file dialog box. So a file dialog box is just a really simple way to select a file that you want to work with. And I, so we're going to first declare an instance of open file dialog and then you can specify some properties of your dialog box so for me I want to set the initial directory and the initial directory is just where this dialog box will open up to so I already have a folder right here that I've set up to hold text documents it's just in my C drive and then sample text docs is the folder name so I'll declare this, you do the at symbol, so the program knows that this is a file location or a folder location. And then you can declare the default extension to be txt because we're looking for text documents. The file dialog filter, we want this to be all txt and you can actually open multiple documents but we don't want to allow this so we're going to set multi-select to false oh, I'm sorry right here this isn't a function you set that equal to filter for all text documents and then we're just going to simply show our file dialog so show dialog like so. So now when we run this application, what I'm expecting is when I click open a text file, we're going to call this event handler and just simply show a file dialog from this folder that I've specified. And when I do so, I get exactly that. So this is the folder that I specified and you'll see that the filter is set to txt documents. I just don't have any in here right now. So I'm going to go ahead and just create a file to work with. So a text document right here, we're just going to call this test, test.txt, and we can go ahead and close this down. So now we want to work a little bit with our file dialog box. And we're going to set up a so file dialog. Oh, let's actually store the name of the file that we select from the file dialog box. So remember that we had the file dialog name variable. We'll set this equal to the file dialog. Oops. 
dot file name. So if our file dialog name does not equal null, essentially, then we want to start doing stuff. If it's null, we'll just let it let it essentially just do nothing. So our file name block dot text, we're just going to reset this value and the same for our space blocks because we just basically want those to be blank no matter what. And now our file name block. So the file name block, remember, it's this text block right here. We're going to set that equal to the file dialog name. Oops, got to set that as dot text. And then our read text. We're going to set this equal to file dot. Oops, my bad. So now we need to use another namespace. We need system.io. Using system.io. That allows us to read and write with the files. So read text will be set equal to file dot read all lines file dialog oops can't spell file dialog file name oh I'm sorry file dialog name right there okay and so we're gonna do a loop here a loop where we go through all of read text and basically just print this out. So the way that we're going to do this is our file space box dot text. We're just going to add to it with the value of the line that we're working with on read text. So is this the best practice? I don't know. Probably not, honestly, but it does it does work relatively well and it's relatively simple. So what I'm going to do is show you how this works. So we're going to open a text file. And right now we have this test text file. Let's go ahead and add a little bit of text to work with here. So we'll say sample text here. Sure. Let's save that. And this is just a notepad that I'm working with right now. And now I want to open this in my application. So I just double click and you'll see that we have sample text here. Great. But now I, I have no way of saving this if I were to make edits. So as you probably guessed, the next thing we need to work with is the save file button. Now this one's actually relatively simple. So if the file dialog name is not null, then we're going to do file dot write all text to the file dialog name just take the text straight out of the space box put it just write it to the file so we just overwrite the value essentially with our edits so this would work right now it's not perfect but we could do so when we open this oh and don't forget this does show the location here in the file name so if i were to erase the e here so uh, we'll just say text so sample text and we press save and luckily we didn't get an error there <laughs> that's a good sign um, so now we go here and let's open this with notepad to see if that actually if this is working and we do see so sample text here so it did work it did save our change but the issue right now is it's difficult if i were to press enter right here nothing happens right i can't actually add new lines uh, so that's a major issue if you're trying to edit text um, so now this is why we have this file space box key down event and I'm really just going to work with if you press enter, you know, to make a, a new line and start editing text there. So this is also relatively simple. Is it the best practice? Probably not. But does it work and is it easy to do? Yes. So if e.key is key.enter, so basically if the user presses the enter key, 
we're going to take the caret index of the cursor. And the way we do this is by finding our spacebox dot caret index. So that'll basically take the location of the cursor. And what we want to do is just insert a backslash n, right? So just a new line into wherever we are. So the way we do this is we take our spacebox.txt and we set it equal to the spacebox.txt.text.insert the caret index, which we just stored, and a backslash n, so a new line special character. And then we simply just add one to our caret index. There we go. So now when we run this, we'll see, so we can open a text file. So we have sample text. And now if I want to, when I press enter, we get new lines. So this is a new line. And we'll press save. And to double check that this worked, we'll open it up with notepad. And you'll see that it, it looks identical to what we have in our editor. And I do want to mention some of the shortcomings of this application. Uh, first of all, I'm using an array of size 1000. So basically, this would limit you to a thousand lines of text. Uh, I think it'd be a lot better to use a list and dynamically declare memory, but I didn't for simplicity. Um, I also didn't even use this edit text array, so we really don't even need this. And this application, it's also destined to have bugs. Don't get me wrong. This is not, it's not as good as Notepad. It's not as good as Microsoft Word by a long shot. But I figured this would just be a really super simple way to see how you can work with text documents a little bit inside of a C-sharp application. If you made it this far, I want to congratulate you on creating a very, very simple text editor in C-sharp. That's a super cool little tool to have. And it's also a great learning experience. Uh, if you enjoy my content and the videos that I make, please like and subscribe so that I know that people enjoy the videos that I make. And I will also have the GitHub repo and the Discord channel links in the description. So if you want to check those out, please do. Once again, thanks for watching and have a great day.